Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Ashraf Armeya from Cairo, Egypt. I am happy to uh, start uh, presenting in this web uh, meeting uh, of thermology. It's a great idea that uh, we uh, still be in contact uh, in the era of Corona, uh, COVID-19 all over the world that make the whole world separated and bordered. Uh, from each country and make traveling uh, impossible to see each other and to share experience uh, so this is a great idea that we start to be in contact again on the scientific level and to be in contact till this uh, era uh, go uh, away and we meet each other again uh, my presentation today will be on myopic uh, refractive lens uh, extraction, uh, which is uh, uh, it's a, a, a hot topic uh, with the pros and cons. Uh, so we are going to discuss it today. I have no financial uh, disclosure regarding uh, my presentation. We are going to start by the history of refractive lens exchange uh, which uh, started in the 18th century uh, when Abbey uh, in 1776 was the first to perform such surgery in France. It is the first conducted operation, the clear lens extraction in the homeops in children and young adults, were made by Polish uh, Vincent Fukla. Uh, in the late decades in 19th century in Vienna. Focus operation in myopic patients was widespread along all ophthalmologists in Europe, but due to the high rate of complications in retinal detachment, this, this procedure abandoned gradually in the beginning of the 20th century. Continuing the history of uh, refractive lens exchange and intensive development with the new concept and techniques in the lens surgery in the 20th century started with a clear lens extraction. The introduction, first posterior chamber of intraocular lens, was by Harold Redley in 1949, with the, was the big and first step in cataract surgery. In 1952, Baron implanted the first anterior chamber. IOL fixated on the iridocorneal angle. Then, the concept of phaco emulsification started with the irrigation aspiration technique in the phaco emulsification in the cataract surgery uh, were developed. Complete and much easier lens removal significantly decreased the number of post-surgical complications. Also, another huge step in the lens surgery was the invention of foldable intraocular lenses in 1980s this was the beginning of micro-incision cataract surgery. Refractive lens exchange is identical to the modern cataract surgery, but both operations involve removal of the natural lens and an IOL implantation. But there is a huge difference between the cataract lens extraction and the refractive lens exchange. In cataract lens extraction, we remove the opa opaque lens due to the light scattering that caused uh, by the uh, in the mystery natural lens causing blur, halos. But in the refractive lens exchange, we just perform reduce the need of glasses or the contact lens in spite of a clear lens removal. So, what are the benefits of refractive lens exchange? About 4 out of 5 patients are completely free of glasses after refractive lens exchange, either by the using of multifocal IOLs or by using the technique of monovision, which is one eye for dominant vision, which is distant vision, and the near vision, less dominant eye. Approximately 95% of patients are satisfied with the outcome of the surgery and many describe it as a life-changing because there is no glasses 
after this operation. Although refractive lens exchange is often uh, bracketed with a cosmetic surgery procedure, the benefits are mainly functional. Continuing the benefits of refractive lens exchange, it is designed to make you less dependent on glasses and contact lenses, helping to, to lead an active lifestyle more easily. It eliminates the need of cataract surgery in later life, and it is often preferred to laser vision correction for patients in the retirement age group in whom the early stages of cataract formation are often already present. Continuing the benefits, in the absence of a new health problems in the eye, vision normally remains good and your spectacles prescription normally remains stable after refractive lens exchange. If you do, if you do experience any deterioration of vision in years after surgery, it can be reserved by a one minor laser procedure, which is the egg capsulotomy, in cases of posterior capsule ossification. But we need to choose what is suitable for refractive lens exchange. If you are over 50 years of age and you have a glasses prescription higher than the normal range of laser eye surgery, you are likely to be suitable for refractive lens exchange. Almost any level of myopia short distance sites can be corrected by refractive lens exchange and IOL with built-in stigmatism correction are available. Lens implantation techniques can be combined with laser eye surgery in suitable patients to extend the range of astigmatism treatment or fine-tune to focus the outcome. When we talk about myopic refractive exchange, patients with high myopia are often willing to have lens refractive procedure performed in order to be made independent from the use of spectacles or contact lenses. Many original studies and reviews have been made to assess the result of such procedure and the risk of intraoperative complications and postoperative complications. So we are going to talk about the studies. Study 1 say that the FICIC IOL implantation and the refractive lens exchange were compared in a group of highly myopic 30 to 50 year old patients. The refractive lens exchange was performed in eyes with the anterior chamber shallower than 2.8 mm or at the beginning of presbyopia. Whereas the FICIC IOLs were was implanted in eyes with no recent visual acuity decrease or presbyopic refraction changes. At one year follow-up, the results were similar in both groups. In conclusion, so the FICIC lens implantation in myopic patients from 30 to 50 years old were more adequate refractive technique with lower risk of corrected distant visual acuity, loss, and extraction of crystalline lens can be performed as a secondary procedure. Study number two. Compare the refractive lens exchange with and the columnar lens VZN implantation in patients less than 45 years old with myopia greater than minus 12 diopters. The refractive lens exchange group showed better results for post-operative corrected uh, visual acuity and had no serious complications such as retinal detachment, endophthalmites, or inflammatory action. In the implantable columnar lenses ICL, old version, grew, however, the lens opacity, pigmented dispersion, macular hemorrhages, or pupillary block glaucoma occurred. 
for eyes from refractive lens exchange group required YAG laser capsulotomy for PCO. So what is the modern indication for pediatric refractive lens exchange? High anisometropia or severe bilateral amitropia. Congenital condition disabling proper binocular vision. Non-compliant children with the high refractive errors who are treatment with refractive laser surgery is impossible. Shallow anterior chamber less than 3.2 millimeter where phacic IOLs is impossible or too risky to be implanted. In spite of the refractive lens exchange in pediatric a group in highly myopic eyes, double the risk of this complication and has about 30% risk of developing glaucoma. Depending on the preoperative refractive error, some congenital lens abnormalities like microspherophakia, high myopia or hypropia, secondary glaucoma, with considerable refractive error can be an indication for refractive lens exchange with or without IOL implantation. Refractive lens exchange can serve also in less common situations, for example, methods of correcting persistent accommodation spasm after head trauma. When we choose the power intraocular lens for refractive lens exchange, the actual desired post-operative refraction should be dis discussed since a small degree of myopia minus half to minus one may be desirable in cases of monofocal IOL use when you use without reading glasses. Apart from the appropriate patient selection, the most important assessment for successful multifocal lenses used requires precise preoperative measurements of the axial lens and accurate lens power calculation. The first choice, we're going to use the Hofer Higgs, SRK Higgs, or the SRKT for the uh, axial lens uh, 2.24.5, or the axial lens more than 26, we recommend the SRKT or Higgs. The second choice, we are going to use the Holiday 2 for less 22, holiday for 22, holiday for more than uh, 24. We must highlight this. In spite of the encouraging results of refractive lens surgery in myopic eyes, there still remains a number of complications that are difficult to avoid. So what are the complications? The most vision threatening complication is refractive lens exchange is the RD with the instance from 1.5 to 2.2 percent. In a normal population the RD occurs in 1 over 8,500 eyes. The odds of RD, however, can increase to 1 over 850 eyes in cases of myopia greater than minus 10 diopter in unoperated eyes, 0.68% and in eyes after cataract extraction with IOL implantation. The retina complication, especially in highly myopic eyes after refractive surgery such as refractive lens exchange are mainly attributed to two possible causes. The higher instance of predisposing retinal lesion in myopic eyes or the hypothesis that the refractive surgery may induce some iatrogenic factors which can increase the instance of such pathology. So, it's very important to know that since these are entirely elective procedures, minimizing a risk is critical 
to the success of refractive lens exchange and refractive surgery in general. So, how to avoid an RD? It's not an easy, there is nothing to be 100%, but there is some precautions. Careful preoperative fundoscopic examination with sclerer depression indentation should be made to access the state of the vitreous body. Intraoperative, intraoperatively, we must have the minimal disturbance of the intraocular environment very important. Number three, recommended a bimanual micro, micro incisional fecal emulsification, a bimanual, or if you don't have, so a small incision lens extraction in myopic eyes. Number four, prophylactic laser therapy of the lattice degeneration in myopic eyes if there is an instance of any tear or any suspicious lesion. This is uh, some go with and some uh, go against. But if you have a significant hole with no traction and you are going to do a selective procedure, so it's mandatory to do the laser and to leave the patient for three weeks for uh, the maximal reaction, then you can go for the refractive lens exchange. So what is during uh, lens surgery? During the operation, you should have a transient decrease of the intraocular pressure. Decompression effect is very important to decrease the movement of the vitreous body to the front and the back so it has some traction on the vitreous base, especially if the vitreous is already degenerated and it is still has some points of attraction to the retina. So, very important to maintain your constant intraocular pressure during the surgery. Changes detected in protein of, of the pseudophagic eyes coexist with alteration in the structure of the vitreous body. They can contribute to the occurrence of retinal complication after cataract surgery. So, if this is all the uh, nice idea of refractive lens action that can do everything good, no, there is some negative point, and it is the risk to do the benefit again the risk. So the patient consent very important to describe what is positive and once the negative again is this procedure, the refractive lens exchange. So. It was argued that the eyes with myopic greater than minus 8 diopters in the presbyopic patient who still accommodate refractive lens exchange should not be considered due to the increased risk of retinal detachment from 2.8 to 8.1% and FECAC lens implantation should be performed in such cases. It was shown in a long-term follow-up study of the refractive lens exchange in high myopia that the myopic macular degeneration developed post-surgically in 12 eyes. Yeah, capsulotomy, PCO is required in 38 to 62 from 62 of the eyes. And the retinal ligmatogenal detachment occurring in 2 from 62 eyes. So, to analyze what is the main risk factor for RD, there are two factors. The intraoperative capsular tear with vitreous loss and the laser capsulotomy performed for the PCO post-operative after uh, many, uh, uh, many months after the operation. So, when not to perform refractive lens exchange in myopic eyes? Eyes with advanced peripheral lattice degeneration, or young eyes 
with no posterior vitreous detachment, lacquer cracks in high myopia or myopic CNV in the fellow eyes because it's going to aggravate the process, presbyopic eyes with macular degeneration beginning in the fellow eye because also it's going to increase the process of age rate macular degeneration, Now I'm going to give some key surgical points for the refractive lens exchange before I'm going to present a video of the procedure. First, not too long corneal tunnel to avoid kinking of the cornea and to prevent more deep of the anterior chamber during the operation. Second point is to make the sleeve of the phaco tip little bit back to expose more of the tip and make the flow of the BSS above the iris diaphragm to avoid the sulcus block. Third point, a good size central circular capsular excess to avoid any tilt of the IOL or displacement. The fourth point is good polish of the posterior capsule to decrease the instance of PCO, which is a common to happen. So, not a long tunnel, as we th said. A good size of the rexus. Don't be hurry. You needed a circular, continuous, capsular rexus, so it's better to be controlled with the capsular rexus forceps so you continued with no extension and in a good size and shape then a good hydrodissection done and with the phaco you go flip and ship to remove it if you do a good Hydrosection, you are going to flip it easy and you remove it like this. Then, removal of the uh, cortex with good polish of the posterior capsule. Any part of the cells, you should polish it very good to decrease the elements of PCO. Three piece IOL, it's uh, uh, good because in these cases the eye is big. So, when, when, it, when the eye is big, it is going to stretch it by the three-piece IOL. Removal or the, the viscoelastic, even under the IOL, to uh, decrease the instance of capsular block after the operation. Good hydration. Another, another uh, uh, case. You, you make the step of the rexus. Slowly you shape the size of the rexus, which is a very important in these cases. It's an elective surgery and you need it, it with the best results. Good size, good hydrodissection. You, you rotate it. You rotate. with the bimanner, so you remove all the nucleus. Good IA, very important. Good polish of the, good polish of the uh, posterior capsule, very important. And this case, you put a three piece because it is less myopic, so I put a single piece IOL and a good hydration and leave the eye in a good tension, IOP. So my take home message is, refractive lens exchange is an elective intraocular surgery that needs to be minimally invasive and performed with the precision and the high accuracy. The indication of the surgery 
is the presence of high refractive errors in the absence of cataracts and requires an approach with less with the risk equal benefit ratio in mind depending on the age refractive condition and the preoperative condition in general refractive lens exchange should be performed only in presbyopic eyes the main challenge involved is to reach emetropia For restoration of near, intermediate, and far vision, multifocal or trifocal IOLs is very important, and we have a lot of uh, companies now giving the best for trifocal uh, IOLs with the least uh, post-operative halos and, uh, and uh, glare. This is a very important. This is a very issue to discuss with the patient and uh, try to uh, uh, convey the patient if he is suitable for this he, uh, the cornea is okay and the posterior segment and the macula is fine and he has no issue that uh, uh, prevent uh, using the trifocal IOLs with the rapid recovery and the astigmatically neutral incision currently used for modern cataract surgery this procedure can be done with greater predictability Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I'm hoping that the uh, the coronavirus um, uh, era it uh, finished uh, soon, and uh, to welcome everyone uh, to our lovely country Egypt uh, as soon as possible. Thank you so much. See you in the next our next presentation. Thank you. Bye bye.